Hey guys, Sepp here, and for today I've prepared another experiment that at one point was already featured on my channel. Recently someone hit me up about my finding the perfect shifting point video and asked whether the results still hold, to which I had no definitive answer. In my head the data should still be valuable since the yearly updates to GT3 cars usually mostly focus on improving aerodynamics while the engine stays the same. But because some of the newer GT3 cars were missing as well in my old findings, I decided to just redo the whole experiment. So in this video I'll quickly go over how I conducted my experiment and in the process also showcase how I collected my raw data used to get my results. Afterwards, I'm gonna show you the updated or rather the new findings for all more recent revisions of all cars present in the GT3 class. And lastly, in case you're here for an older model or one out of the GT4 class, I'll show you how you can conduct the experiment yourself and generate your own results. Finding the optimal shifting point for any car isn't all too difficult, at least on paper. All one needs are really just two plots. One showcasing the RPM of a car over its speed at every time frame and a second one presenting the g-forces attained over the car's speed. Then we can connect the data points, filter out all of the surrounding noise and focus on one shifting process at a time. And as you can see here, if everything is adjusted properly, one can easily see where the acceleration of the lowest gear starts to drop off and being in the next higher gear is beneficial. So the only thing that's left is to select the first data point of the lower gear that lies below this threshold. Look up its RPM here and that's it. We successfully obtained one sample of the best shifting RPM for our specimen in this instance. Repeat this process for all gear shifts and verify your results with at least another lap and you are good to go. And that's already it for the data analysis part. But where and how is our data generated? Well, for this it is favorable to conduct your gear shifts in an environment that is free of outside influences, mainly additional g-forces which are mostly generated when running over bumps or cornering. In short, our best case testing grounds consists of a straight with infinite length. But, you know, since racetracks are usually closed circuits, there need to be at least two corners at all times. So, best ACC can do is Paul Ricard with its starting and even better, its back straight. Those two parts of the track are our windows of opportunity to map each car's acceleration curves from 1st all the way up to 6th gear. Ideally, 1st to 3rd gear are mapped on the starting straight while the remaining gears are done on the back straight. Now, there's only one caveat left. Since our goal is to map the relevant part of a car's acceleration, which often includes revving it all the way up to its limiter, we have to decelerate for a bit after each upshift in order to really get a full picture of the relevant data. A good example for this trap is the BMW. If one didn't shortly tap the brakes after shifting, its graphs would look like the following and the conclusion was to shift as late as possible. However, if you stick to what I just said and decelerate, the graph actually shows an intersection between gears, meaning there exists an even better shifting point at a lot lower RPM. So yeah, with that out of the way, I am now gonna proceed to the hot topic and showcase all shifting points for each car. Displayed are general shifting ranges as well as the optimal RPM to shift for each gear. Afterwards, I'm gonna stick to my promise made in the beginning and give you a quick run on, on how you can conduct your own experiments and do the measurements all by yourself in no time.
Well, hello there, it's me again. And now I'm gonna show you how you can generate your own data or rather analyze your own data for any car in a set of course competition. So first of all, you need to install a software called Motec, which can easily be done by sticking to the instructions given on this website. After successfully doing so and booting up Motec, you should see the following window. From there, you can select your workspace or in case there isn't any work workspace present for now, you can click on open existing workspace, select your workspace that you copy to your Motec workspace folder and just click OK. From here, Motec should display several categories on the top side, but we are only really interested in the RPM history category. So make sure to open it. Next, we need to fill or rather we need to provide Motec with some data, which can be done by selecting file in the top left corner, open log file, and then searching for your Assetto Corsi Competizioni folder, which should be in your documents folder, and then click on the Motec folder. This should now display all of your telemetry labs that you recorded in ACC. And here you can just select any file that you want to analyze. In my case, let me have a look which one makes for a good example. I think the BMW M6. So let's open any of those files. And as you can see, after pressing OK on the bottom right in this little window, Motec just loads all data points present in this file into the software. And it should now also be obvious that the two windows which I mentioned at the very beginning of the video that you need to analyze your shifting points are present right here by default. The top window presenting RPMs over speed and the bottom window presenting acceleration in g-forces over the speed. But as you can see here, over the course of a whole lap, which is uh, indicated by the green rectangle on the top side, there are a lot of data points. and some of them add some unwanted noise to the data, which we need to remove. So what you can do is to go to the edges of the green rectangle and just reduce it in size. And what this does is to tell Motec that it should only consider the data points generated in this little section of the lab that we select by adjusting the size of the green rectangle. And even better, we can also move the green rectangle to select different sections on our lab. So in this instance, I'm gonna quickly demonstrate how you can figure out the best shifting point for the BMW, which is the well log file I selected earlier, when being in third gear or in fourth gear and wanting to shift to fifth. So first of all, what you wanna do is to adjust the green rectangle to a fitting size, which we already did and then just slide it around until you see the line displayed down here in green, which indicates data points generated while being in the fourth gear and data points generated while being in fifth gear. And now our only goal is to find the intersection between those two lines. Now, as you can see, even if I move the rectangle to the left or to the right, there isn't really an intersection yet which just means we need to readjust the size of the green rectangle. And as you can now see, if we scroll into the data points on the bottom window, we can see an intersection. But because those are only data points and we have to draw imaginary lines, our measurements wouldn't be too accurate. So. What you can do is to right click on the bottom window, go to properties, go to display and check the join samples with the line box on the very bottom. Press OK and scroll in. And as you can see now, every data point is connected by a line with the next data point. So the only remaining thing to do now is to just figure out where those two lines consistently intersect, which would be somewhere in this area, and then look up the RPM of the lower gear, in our case, the RPM of the green data points, and look them up up here. So you can safely say that the perfect shifting point 
for the BMW going from 4th to 5th gear would be somewhere around, let's see, 6.4, maybe a bit earlier, 6.48 and 6.5, 6 RPM. Then you just repeat this measurement for a few, for a few more laps, sorry, and just take the average. And then that's your shifting point. And also a quick tip that I can give you, especially if you're looking for shifting points from 5th to 6th gear, you should really adjust the uh, size of the window in the bottom, since some of the data points from when you're in, si in sixth gear could be lying outside this window. So what you want to do is to once again right click, go to properties, this time go to channels, click the setting wheel on the X axis, then go to display limits, switch the mode from auto to manual, select zero as your minimum and 300 as your maximum. Press OK, press OK. And as you can see, now your speed doesn't go just from zero to, what was it before, 260 something kph, but rather from zero to 300 kph, which is a lot more comfortable. And lastly, for some cars, the shifting points doesn't really present itself as nicely as it does for the BMW where two lines intersect. And some cars might even have no intersections of those lines at all. And what this means is that your shifting point is just as close to the ref limiter as possible. So don't get confused if this should happen any time to you. <laughs> well, maybe I can even quickly demonstrate to you how this looks like. Hang on. Let me look for the Ferrari. Which one was it? Uh, I think the non-evo. Hang on. Hang on. Where is the back straight? Back straight should be somewhere here. Yeah, exactly. So as you can see here, that is how the Ferrari looks. And there isn't really an intersection between those two lines. And what this tells us is just that your ideal shifting point is as close to the ref limiter as possible. So in our case, as you can see here, as the drop off of acceleration indicates, you hit your ref limiter at about 7.3k RPM, which you can look up here, and afterwards the acceleration force of a cliff. And since your yellow line, which in this case is the or are the data points of the higher gear, doesn't really intersect with the green line at all, you can safely conclude that your shifting point is as close to the ref limit as possible. So yeah, with that out of the way, I hope you did enjoy the video. And if you did, you could consider subscribing to this channel for more sim racing content. And with that said, happy testing, happy new year, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.